Welcome back. I love sharing the different experiences that I've had, and I hope that this helps to perhaps give you some ideas of different um, areas you may want to look into. Today, we're going to look into the oldest city in the world. Where are we going to today? Jericho. We had so much fun there, so many different things we learned. It was amazing. This is another spring. The spring water just saw the orange roof behind the city, okay? But this water was coming directly from the spring. As I told you guys, this water was undrinkable water, was very salty water. And after the miracle and life from it came here and made this miracle, the water became a drinkable and very sweet water. Today, so much people in Jericho they are drinking from a large spring. So many tourists and pilgrims as well, they like drink from a large spring, you know, as a holy water. If you want to drink, don't drink from here. Because here it's before the miracle. Okay? If you want to drink into the tap for the earth, drinking water is after the miracle. You will like it and you will be much younger when you drink it. I drink it every day. I'm 92 years old. <laughs> Take a picture. I got it. Okay, and the population here is only 25,000 people. Most of them they are working as a farmers. Why? Because here is subtropical climate. The temperature in summer, some days like July and August, you know how much? We get over 50 Celsius, like 130 Fahrenheit. It's very, very hot temperature in summer. But in the winter time, it's the best temperature, My like 15, 16, 17 Celsius. It's not cold now. and it's not hot. No, in Georgia, we normally have two seasons. We have hot and very hot only, okay? And we can see all the tropical fruits, like banana, papaya, mango, dates, lemon, orange. But the famous fruit in Georgia is the bananas. We call it the latest fingers, very small and sweet, chiquita banana. And we have the best dates in all the world, is the medjool dates. In Jericho, we have over 120,000 trees of palm dates. We export a lot of dates every year from Jericho to Europe. And here in the city you know, of Muslims, Christian, they are all together, very peaceful. The average of a crime in Jericho almost zero. No crime. Because 25,000 people only live in Jericho. Most of them, they know each other like one family with no any difference, no any problems here. But actually, guys, honestly, we have so much places, historical and religious places to see and visit in Jericho because we have over 113 places. That's really too much for tourists and pilgrims because you know most of them they have cable hours. Two or three hours not really enough to visit. You need like two or three weeks of finish. What is the famous of this tree right now? Maybe you pass one of them, is the sycamore tree. So the tree, that actually not the story, that is the place where it was with the case, the tax collector in Roman time. Today in the center we can see the tree. That's actually so much pilgrims and tourists with the art of Jericho. They like to go there, take a picture for the sycamore tree. Even it's not the original tree, by the way, because the sycamore tree is never lived 2,000 years old in this time. But this is like a sample, you know? It's like grand, 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 grand daughter of the original one, because the is like two or three hundred years old. Okay? The same location, the same spot, now so much pilgrims and tourists are going there, take a picture for the tree. Second place is the Elisha Spring. If you look down, can see the orange roof? Yeah, that's one here, behind the street. Inside this building here, we have the resource of the water of the Elisha Spring, or Ilya Spring. You know, I actually belong to the Old Testament story. This water here in Jericho down there was undrinkable water. It was very, very salty water. And the people who was living in Jericho in the ancient time, which is 9th century before Christ, they said to Elisha Prophet, the location of Jericho, it's really good, but the water here is very bad. It's undrinkable water, we cannot drink it. It's undrinkable for the people and for agriculture. 
In that time, a large prophet came down to the city and made this miracle down there in the resort of the water. The miracle was very simple. You know, he was on the bring salt and he was added salt to the salt to water, mix it all together and you know he was pray and the water became drinkable and very sweet water for the people and for agriculture. And today we have five springs in Jericho. One of them is the largest spring, that's one here down. So many people in Jericho that are drinking from the largest spring and so many tourists and pilgrims as well they like to drink from the large spring. When we finish here, I will go to the large spring and to drink some water in there. You will like it, very nice water, very sweet water. And you know, you will be much younger when you drink it. Okay? That's number two. Number three is the mountain sensation. Look up there, the mountain. That's mountain, it's really very famous place in Jericho. We call it the Mount of Temptation, that's why, because you know, belonging to the biblical story, that is the place where Jesus was tempted by devil, when he was a fasted for two days and forty nights. Jesus was tempted by devil three times. The first time and third time was up there in the mountain, and the second temptation was in Jerusalem. And you know, in that time he was a fasted for two days and forty nights, no eat, no drink. That was also up there in the Mount of Temptation. Guys, if you look at the mountain, all the mountains there is like holy mountain. Why all? Because to be honest with you, no one exactly knows in which part of this mountain Jesus was being attempted or fasted 40 days and 40 nights. But what we can see up here in this mountain, you can see the Greek Orthodox monastery and the church. You can see the building in the middle? That monastery and the church that was actually built in 19th century was built by the Greek Orthodox. The Greek Orthodox they was built up here, 1892. There was built 25 rooms. After that, you will see like two white domes together. That is the small church. And they built like a stone there, like a sample, to show the pilgrims and tourists how Jesus was created up here and passed through this and fortnight. Today, just only two months from up here, two people. One of them is 90 years old. Okay? And so many pilgrims and tourists they want to go up. Some of them they climb all the mountain by foot and some of them they take the cable car. But you know, summertime you shouldn't take the cable car. The last year two pilgrims died from the heat. They was over 80 years old and they want to climb all the mountain by foot. It was like 50 cells. It was very hot temperature, very steep. It's not even easy for the young people to go home. That's the temperature. The name of this monster is Carantel, by the way. Carantel, that's like Spanish language, Quaranta. Quaranta, Quarantena, that's been 40, where it is what the past is 40 days and 40 nights. To the left here, you can see many poles, that is natural caves. One of those caves is almost 100 meters deep inside. They used it before like a natural resistor for the action of water. water. There was a found a battery, gold, skeletons, a lot of things up there. And look to the very, very top, all the way up to the top. See the wall? That was a castle in Roman time. In the Roman time, they built three castles around Jericho. Three. One of them is up there, we call it Doke. The other one is Capus in the New Testament, Jericho in the corner over there. And number three, you about Masada before? Dead yeah. Sea. Masada is the Dead Sea, okay? Doka, Kerberos, and Masada. But why they want to put this one up there in the mountain? Because usually, they can't see and control all Jericho and all the Jordan Valley. Speak about geography. Jericho to Jordan, where it's driving, it's less than 30 minutes. Okay? We are here, we call the city, the border to Jordan. Exactly, because we are so close to Jordan. But actually, we have three borders between Jericho and Jordan. That takes sometimes long time. Okay? Over one hundred hours. Okay? That's number three. Number four is a place we call it Hisham's Palace. That palace is over there, you can see like big red roof in the corner. Mm. That just behind it, we have a place we call it Hisham's Palace. That palace, you know, was an Islamic time in Umayyad Empire. I don't think so, you know, the Umayyad Empire. You know the Ottomans? Yeah. The Turkish the Ottomans? Yeah. You know, the last empire in Islam was the Ottomans. Before the Ottomans, we have the Abbasid Empire that was in Iraq. And before the Abbasid Empire, we have the Umayyad Empire that was in Syria. And just for your knowledge, the oldest city in all the world is Jericho. The oldest country in all the world is Iraq, Babylonia. And the oldest capital in all the world is Damascus in Syria. In that time, Damascus was the capital also for the Umayyad Empire. And the Winter Palace, there was for the king here in Jericho. Because Jericho in winter time is very good temperature. 
They spent seven years to build the palace here in the city, but 749 was very strong earthquake and all Jericho destroyed. Nothing left. All the city was collapsed and destroyed. And at that time also the palace, the winter palace for the king was also destroyed and collapsed. Today, what we can see there in the Hisham's palace, we can see the largest mosaics in the Middle East and in the ancient world. We can see the cold path, foot path, fountain, gates, walls, most other things. But in this town there, it's closed because they have constructions and rebuilding for the palace. They need like two or three months more to open it again for tourists and pilgrims. Now we tell you about the last place, is the old Jericho, the ancient city here, just this small area behind you. All the ancient Jericho, by the way, it's 50 acres. Not big area, it's only 50 acres. That is the old Jericho. And this city it's a very famous city, that's why. Because first of all, it's the oldest city in all the world, 10,500 years old. And the second reason, because actually you know, the most pilgrims that they come here, they want to know about the story of Joshua. It's very famous also because of the story of Joshua. You know Joshua? Joshua. You know Moses? Yeah. Because if you don't know Moses, that's the problem. <laughs> okay. You know, Moses and Joshua, they were all the time traveled together. Joshua was his student, and Moses was teaching all the time. If you read the Old Testament story before, that's land Jericho, that's the small area behind me here, that was the promised land for the Israelite people, okay? Jericho was the promised land for the Israelite people, but we know the God in that time was punished them all, but Moses was not allowed for them to take the promised land for 40 years. They were stay all outside in the desert. It's true, because you know that God was all the time speaking to the Moses, Moses. At one time, he just told him, Moses, go back to your people in the desert right now. They worship another God. You will stay you and with them. Actually, 40 years outside of the promised land, you will stay in the desert. Moses was actually left and he was staying in the desert over there with his people. And one day, he's missing to see the promised land again. He wants to jerk it, okay? He came from the desert and went up there to smash the mountains. Okay, just trust me over the river mountains, okay? <laughs> that's mountains there, we call it Mount Nebo. Mount Nebo, that's exactly in the Jordanian side. He just went up there to the mountains, and from the mountains he saw all the promised land again. He was so old Jericho, all the city, but you know, Moses died up there in the top of this mountain. When he died, in this time, actually, his student Joshua became a prophet later. When Moses died, Joshua became a prophet later, and now he won't continue. He won't take the promised land, because you know, when Moses died, the fourth year is also done and finished. Now they can't take Jericho. But you know, Joshua just become a new prophet. He was have no idea what they have inside the walls of Jericho. He was had no nothing about the city. How we can't take the promised land? And he was know nothing about the promised land. Joshua in that time sent two people we call the two spies, okay, to the city, to the, to the promised land here. In that time was a woman living in Jericho in the promised land. Her name is Rahab. Rahab, Rachel, Raquel in Spanish. Rachel or Rahab or Rachel, she was a woman living in the city and according to the Old Testament story she was a prostitute and her house was against the wall of Jericho, just behind the walls of the city. When the two spies just came to Jericho, she accepted them in her house and she helped them to know everything about the city. Rahab or Rachel or Raquel, she was helping them to know about the walls of Jericho, about the gates, about the watchtowers, about the houses, about the palace, about the population of Jericho. She told them about everything. And even when the soldiers, they was looking for them inside the walls of Jericho because they saw like two foreign people that they walked inside the walls of Jericho, that's so strange. Rahab, she was hiding carefully in her house and she helped them later to make a hole through her house to the wall of Jericho and run outside to the desert to Joshua place there. Joshua was waiting there behind the mountains. They told him about everything that was on the promised land. And you know, in the time when Moses died up there in the mountains, Joshua also became the leader of the 12 tribes. You know the 12 tribes? That's the people who was living in Egypt before with Moses. When he was crossed the Red Sea, came to the desert. When he just died up there in the mountains, Joshua became the leader for all these people who was past the Red Sea before. We call it the 12 tribes, okay? All the 12 tribes with Joshua came from the desert to the Bethany after this mountain here. They came down to the Jordan Valley and they crossed all the Jordan rivers from here and they came all to the city 
to the promised land and they took territory here and that was like a miracle how that was happened all the 12 tribes together with Joshua was next seven rounds around the world of Jericho seven days all together around the walls and the last day the last round there was a shouted seven times by the shofar the shofar trumpet the horn seven times it was very loud sound very loud sound behind the walls of Jericho and the walls were pulled down and collapsed they killed everyone they killed everyone in Jericho in that time except Rahab or Rachel and her son because she helped them before when she had the crucified in her house and she helped them to know everything about Jericho. They built all Jericho and they took the promised land. That today is the famous story how the Israelite people they took actually Jericho, the promised land for them here. Actually guys, that is the famous story and today when you see so much pilgrims and tourists they come into Jericho, the old city, that's the first reason is to see the wall of Jericho or house Rahab or Rachel or any ruins built into the story of Joshua. But just to know, I will tell you about a lot of the excavations and digging your excavations. Digging. The excavations and digging was here was by British archaeologist. Her name is Kathleen Kinnian. She was in Jericho 1952, 1958. The British archaeologist she was found in the city in this time, 23 different civilizations. She was found 23 different civilizations. What that mean? That means Jericho was destroyed and rebuilt 23 times. Okay? The first